I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rakhar Kadash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David, reborn again, and Shalom to the 130 Yashar who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I want to go ahead and touch upon the whore of Babylon and the notion that America, who is known biblically in the Bible as Mystery Babylon the Great, and the uh, horror that sits upon her and where that comes from. Now, before I do that, I want to go ahead and get into a scripture that refers to uh, the horror of Babylon and a warning to our people to stop in her ways, to stop following the path of, of her, her for, for, spiritual fornication because it's going to lead to your death. Now, this is Revelations 18 and 3. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her, her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward, reward her even as she has rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Now, that her, her, her in that scripture is referring to the whore of Babylon. Now, here in America, or what I'm going to refer to as Mystery Babylon the Great, we know her as Lady Liberty. And some of you may know her as uh, Columbia. Right? She even has her own place here in Bab Mystery Babylon known as the District of Columbia. Well, you see, Mystery Babylon has fooled many people around the world, especially the people that live in it. Live in it. They have told uh, a lie saying that America is a Christian nation, which it is not. It follows pagan religion. It's it's a when it's pre when it elects presidents, it initiates them in a, a ritual known as Apollo Rising which invokes the spirit of Nimrod or Osiris into them um, you also have the veneration of, of Osiris's wife known as Isis or when you go further back uh, Nimrod's wife called Samaramis who ultimately throughout History has always been worshipped by, by different names. You've known her as the, the goddess Diana in the Roman uh, Empire. You've known her as um, Dagon in, in uh, you know from uh, the, the Hamites, the true Africans. Uh, she's been known as, uh, as you see here, Lady Liberty. And, and, and so many other names. Guadal the Virgin Guadalupe. Uh, Mother Mary, the Virgin Mother Mary, that is not the not the uh, Messiah's mom, but you see, this woman who is represented by the Statue of Liberty here is really a spiritual entity which has been concocted by these witches and warlocks of of uh, Babylon, uh, Mystery Babylon here in America them being known as the Chaldeans. You see, this video clip of this guy called Tom Hartman, he uh, is going to explain to you how America was really founded upon pagan beliefs and they even created a, they invented a goddess, this goddess being Columbia. I'm going to let you watch this video so you can explain it. 
But, you know, when somebody says that, you know, the founders wanted America to be a Christian country, I have to challenge that. It's not true. Well, I mean, if you look back on the history, that kind of looks that way. Twice in the Constitution. In the Constitution, Josh, twice it says, once there should be no religious test for office and and, and, and once that, that freedom of religion, uh, and including freedom from, a li from religion, shall be absolute. I mean, you know, it, it, you've got the Establishment Clause and you've got the, the First Amendment to the Constitution. Everywhere you look in America, even on our money, statues, it, it talks about God or, or every, everywhere. Well, well that was in 1956 in God We Trust was put on our coins by Dwight Eisenhower in response to pressure from the John Birch Society to defy the godless communists in the Soviet Union. Um, you're right, In God We Trust is on our money. Um, but the founders never put it on our money. It, they put, they put well, a goddess on our money. They invented a goddess. I mean, that's as pagan as you can get. The, the founder, Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, and there was another one, maybe it was George Mace, there were three of them. They got together and they said, you know, America has, uh, you know, because the, the, they, they were modeling the American Republic on the Greek, on the Greek uh, democracy and the Roman Republic, right? And, and they said, you know, the Greeks had gods and goddesses, the Romans had gods and goddesses, we have gods, male gods, right, the religion, the, the, the Christian and Jewish gods, but we have no goddesses. So let's invent a goddess for the United States. And they literally invented a goddess out of whole cloth. They named her after the, after the guy who discovered the continent, Columbus, and they, they put her on the top of the Capitol building. They said that no building in Washington, D.C. could be taller than her head. Her name is Columbia. Columbia Rising, you know, the, the, they put her on our on our currency. She has been on the uh, she, the, the, the Columbia uh, walking silver dollar was minted right up until the 1980s. Reagan was the one who took the goddess off our currency. 200 years of that, Josh. She's in she's in front of the uh, judicial the uh, excuse me the uh, Department of Justice. John Ashcroft covered up her naked breast, remember, famously? She's out there with a blindfold and the scales. She's in front of the Defense Department, in one hand holding a shield, in another hand holding a, a quiver of, or a bundle of arrows. She's in, I mean, she's in front of the Agriculture Department with, with a sigh, uh, you know, to, to, to harvest wheat. Every department uses the goddess. She's on our flags. Um, it, 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 they named, they named the, the center of government for the United States after the goddess. They said, we're gonna, we're, and, and this district is going to be dedicated to Columbia, the goddess, the District of Columbia. And, and like I said, no building can be taller than her head, and, and no person who lives in the district can engage in partisan activity like voting. <laughs> That's why the District of Columbia doesn't have representation in Congress. Talk about pagan religions. Back to you, Josh. You know, I, I, I hear all that. I, I just wish the two parties to get along better. I mean, Oh, yeah, I'm all in favor of that. As you can see, Tom Hartman's uh, counter <laughs> argument uh, partner here isn't isn't um, isn't all that versed in in, in these matters and shit. Can't really speak on it. But um, as Tom was saying, Colombia is the pagan goddess that these these uh founding fathers created now they didn't create her from scratch they used goddesses from the from historic past right and it ultimately all goes back to you know diana and basically ultimately samaramis who was ultimately the moon goddess right here's the district of columbia you know uh district of columbia has this section here this part here is called alexandria right it's uh when this place was created it was created to be um a, a weapon of mysticism right of magical powers because what you've been, been told by your government is that they are witches and they're satanists and they use the powers of, of the left side to gain control this is why they laid out the district of columbia this right here is uh, the White House right here then you got other points here and down here you got the uh, Pentagon 
notice that the pentagon points directly to uh, the center of this pentagon, right? And it, and it kind of just all lines. And there's so many more hidden symbols in here and, you know, uh, mysticism. And it's all was planned out by these devils. These, these, these devils here, they are known for practicing what's known as Freemasonry. Now, when you get past all the lies and deceptions, Freemasonry ultimately is the harnessing and worshiping of Lucifer, um, Salaki, of Satan. These people would be considered Lucifer, the Luciferians on earth doing, or what they refer to them as light bearers, right? But, you know, the truth is, is that the, uh, the, the, tr the prophets of the Lord are the true Luciferians. They're the true light bearers. They have the true light. These guys simply have a form of light, but it's the light from the left side. Now, they do this. They did this so that way they could build their new world order. This was coined, this uh, idea was coined by a past Freemason. Uh, back then they didn't they didn't call him Freemasons, they called him Rosicrucians. But his name was Francis Bacon and he created uh, uh, he wrote a book called the New Atlant the New Atlantis. Because you see these Freemasons they believe in this in this in the past world civilization known as Atlantis. And from there comes a lot of these pagan beliefs and all the stuff that they that these devils want to recreate in this world. But but again, they're not gonna get to it because they're gonna be destroyed. Well ultimately it's a lucky Ultimately, these are the uh, the new devils that control the world, right? The deceivers. These are the, 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 the money masters of our world. And they use religion, money, military influence, and all these organizations here, plus many more, to make up the world that you know. They, uh, they do this through... Like I was just showing you, the city of the city of Washington D.C., District of Columbia, which they, you know, they've invoked a spiritual goddess that goes all the way back to ISIS, along with these other city states to um, to reign from, and and to uh, you know rule the world in what it, how it sees fit. Now this goddess, like I said. She goes back to Samaramis, who goes back to uh, the, the, the being the wife of Nimrod. Nimrod being the, the, the first king after the flood, who lived about 200 years after when the, the flood happened, and who created the Tower of Babel, which ultimately was the, the conjoining of, of all the what was known as the nations in the world at that time to come up against God. Now... The devils of today, they're coming together to build a new world order. And in doing so, they're harnessing the power of the left side. These pagan pagan rituals, this, uh, Satanist rituals, all this type of stuff. Well, this all, the, all these things that are being done here in Babylon the Great um, are manifesting into the spiritual goddess or the spiritual entity right which is going out and it's it's basically swallowing people's morales up right and making them a slave spiritually to these people man and and what i mean by that is you know you got you got feminists out there right they've been indoctrinated with the beliefs or the wine of the whore of babylon so they now have feminist beliefs and they go off and you know they end up shaving their head not wanting to have kids or get married and you know they become a total waste but um, let me go ahead and read to you uh, the the part that describes the uh, the whore of Babylon so let me actually start here let's start where's uh let me start so this is Revelation 17 and 3 so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-covered beast. Now that scarlet-covered beast is the uh, is uh, NATO or the beast. 
NATO being the European countries who have come together to, uh, to join America in ruling the world, right? Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Purple meaning rulership, dominion, also scarlet meaning sins, and basically blasphemy, right? And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. The filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the mortars of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You see, John here, you know, he was, uh, he, he uh, desired, uh, he desired uh, Salaki. He desired that that image of that whore, right? Because you know this Babylonian lifestyle, this you know living here in, in uh, the whore of Babylon in Babylon the Great. It's it's a very alluring system, man. You could do things you want to do here, right? You could do you could uh, you know there's people who go on drug benders, they go on sexual benders, they you know all you know all wickedness. Is to be had here in Babylon, and all it costs you is your soul, you know. And a lot of people don't even understand the science of soul, so you know they're all about this place, man. If they don't do moral wickedness, they, you know, they they do wickedness th through unbeknownst to them by, you know, not not looking into the into the truth of the Bible, not worshiping God, you know, pursuing a career. And making that their god, right? Going after sports and making that their idol, right? This place, this the, this you know mystery Babylon the Great, it is a place of uh, of great spiritual defilement, right? And this is the kingdom of the Edomites, right? The Edomites being the so-called Caucasians, who is going to be the last heathen nation. That will be in rulership at the end time. You see, when you read the Bible, you're told about the uh, 17 nations that that currently rule the world. I'm so lucky. The 18 nations that inhabit the world, Israel, being the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, is one of the nations, making the 17 other nations the heathen nations. Now. Every one of these nations have had a chance to rule since the time of Adam and Eve. You know, it, it could have, it might have been a small empire. It also, it could have been a, a long empire, right? The uh, the Elamites, who or Elam, who ultimately is, it goes back is also the Persian empires within there. They uh, they had a very long, they had a good long rulership along with the the. Uh, um, Ethiopians, who would have been the original Babylonians, right? So every every one of these nations had a chance to rule. Now we are in the last captivity, under the Edomites' uh, last empire before the the the, em the empire which will last forever, which is ruled by uh, um, the Lord, and also the Israelites, being the Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, which is going to this empire which will, is going to come is going to be established forever now see so let's get back to this so and the angel said unto me wherefore dost thou marvel I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and the ten horns the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit is there in, in Europe, right? Which is where um, all these nations, uh, well, basically the uh, the the uh, co the current Edomite stronghold is, is, is strong right now, right? Um, it says, and goeth into perdition, meaning destruction, which means this place is going to be destroyed ultimately. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander 
whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Right? So people are people of the world are going to wonder after this this ruling power of the world. You know? But as it tells you, man, it describes like here's a here's a image or a depiction of this, but there's a um, a better depiction that uh, that GMS came out with. Now this right here basically shows you what the beast is and the whore that sits upon her. Now you see the world is currently under the rulership of the beast, right? That being the Caucasian race. All these nations here have all been, and in fact all nations around the world have been infiltrated by the Edomite race, right? Just as you have Israel, who is in every race, you're also going to have Edom, who is going to be, uh, who has infiltrated into every race. So this is why you're going to have uh, 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 Edomites, who are going to look just like every other nation, and also you're going to have uh, Israelites to look at like other nations. And this is, you know, tells you that in Revelations and also in Second Ezra is about the peaceful multitude from all nations and all tongues, right? And then you just know by history that uh, Esau, Edom that is, has basically slept with all the, the, the all the people of the world, man. This is why you're going to have tares inside of uh, the nation of Israel because their fathers are, are goes back to the lineage of, of, of Esau. And the same thing goes for the, for the people of, of uh, Ammon and also Moab being the Japanese and Chinese and so forth, man. Just because... Edom, because he's a rulership, has this pick of the litter of all the women around the world. But, um, but yeah, so let me go ahead and get to this scripture because ultimately this, this kingdom that was set up with its own goddess, goddess Columbia, who ultimately is, goes back and it's, it's a copy of Isis, of the goddess Isis, who is just a woman. Who, you know decided to make herself try to make herself a god because she ended up dying and you know but you had devils who kept venerating her and kept worshiping the idea where well, all this is ultimately going to, to to cease because all these gods that these these deceivers around the world make they're not gods they're simply just figments of their imaginations and ultimately uh, worship of demons now when these demons depart from from uh, from the side of Edom their just their kingdom is gonna be destroyed now that's gonna happen when the Lord comes back and puts Edom down and uh, Babylon the great down right and tells you here this is Jeremiah 16 and 14 therefore behold the day comes saith the Hawa Basham Shai that it shall no more be said the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from, from the land of the north and from all of the lands whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their, their land that I gave unto their fathers. And then tells you and says, Behold, I will send many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish, fish them. And after I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. So you see, the coming destruction of the District of Columbia of the horror that sits upon the beast and the beast itself is coming soon right you see like like in the movies where they always try to make fun of uh, those people on the sides holding those sandwich boards and saying the end is near well the end is near people we are on the brink of World War 3 it only is gonna take a few more events for that thing to pop off the mark of the beast is already being implemented around the world. Again, it's just a matter of time for it to be mandatory here in the States. 
You can see them changing laws. The New World Order is already getting pushed into uh, place, but it's being done incrementally, so that way you don't know, you, or you can't uh, perceive it and, and do anything about it. This is all happening by passing of, of mandatory IDs, mandatory vaccination, laws on health, a, uh, a, a ban on farming, collecting rainwater, things like this, man, because they're ultimately... They want these devils want to destroy seven billion people on this world, and only have five hundred million. So that way they could live in what they would in their own utopia. But as the Bible says, the Lord's going to throw a monkey wrench into their machine and destroy it, and He's going to save His people. At first, it's only going to be the hundred and forty-four thousand elect. Israelites and one third of the Israelites these being one out of every three Negroes Latinos and Native Indians either Israelites who who uh, know the truth know the Lord's names know the knows the Messiah's names does the best they can keeping the commandments and the Lord has predestined them to survive the, the coming world destruction of World War Three, Jacob's trouble, and so forth, and the rest of Israel ultimately will be reborn and come back into a world which is ruled by the Negro, Latinos, Native Indians, along with the Messiah, along with Lord. So that way, it's going to be basically heaven on earth. Everything's going to be in a perfect balance. So the time's coming up quick people if you're watching this video and if you haven't made it out to a camp yet please look up your closest great millstone camp in your, in your town or close to you and make it out just listen to the word get that uh, that mark of salvation and because uh, time is running out people so I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakwardash the honor to my teachers, the Apostle Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the elect, and Shalom.